Okay, finishing it up, 16 through 20. Oh, we've got about two minutes before the bell on this Friday afternoon. So, see how quickly we can do all this. Number 16, a little ambiguous, and I understand that, but uh, a restaurant offers four types of pizza, four sizes of pizza, two types of crust, four types of cheeses, and eight toppings. How many unique two-topping pizzas exist in this restaurant? For one way, uh, one reason, I would say that uh, since repetition isn't explicitly said uh, to not be a part of the problem, we could consider uh, extra pepperoni, double pepperoni, to be separate and unique from pepperoni sausage. Um, I would clarify that and maybe write it a bit better for you on, on Tuesday. But all the same, I think we're going to choose uh, from four sizes and two crusts and four cheeses. And we're going to do eight times eight, or you could do eight squared. Number 17. Number 17, we're going to draw from set S, where, ooh, a little set builder for you. Let's review that real quick. S is equal to the set of little s's, such that little s is an element of the whole numbers, and s is less than or equal to 7. Okay, just as a refresher, timely as we'll need to know this stuff on our exam, whole numbers include 0. So that's what we're dealing with. Notice that the cardinality of set S is equal to eight. Now I need to make a four digit number in our counting system that can made, be made without repetition. So what I'm gonna think about here, four digit number. Remember it's a number in our counting system so it can't start with zero. So in fact, I only have seven numbers to choose from. Now I'm gonna think, well, I'd be inclined to say six next, but remember now zero is back on the table. So say that we picked, I don't know, four as that first number. Now that we can pick zero as the second number, we again have seven options. But then we start to run out of things the same way we would think. Say that I choose one next, and finally my number finishes with that seven. Uh, so I get 49 times 30 as my uh, final answer. Number 18. This is a bit of a challenging problem. Uh, for one thing, we have uh, Adam, Beth, Sydney, Dwayne, Evan, and Fran. They have tickets for six reserved seats in a row at a concert. Fran and Beth are in a fight and can't sit next to each other. That's agitating because it's going to be really hard to count the number of ways that they are not next to each other. But it wouldn't be that hard to count the number of ways that they are. Uh, but anyway, Adam also insists on sitting on the far left aisle seat. Um, so kind of like we saw in a, that problem earlier where somebody wanted to sit in the middle of five seats, they may as well not even be there. We're not arranging that person. So in one way, we have one, two, three, four, five, six people there that are going to sit in six seats. But one of them is going to sit in one seat no matter what. So he's not even really being arranged. So we're going to kind of ignore Adam. Who cares? So like I said, it's really hard to count the number of ways that Fran and Beth are not together. That's agitating. It's easy to count the number of ways that they are together. We've seen that before. And we kind of tried a pictorial approach to that where we thought, okay, I have these seats, right? One, two, three, four, five. Remember, Adam is just sitting on the aisle and not moving, so who cares? If you want to draw him in there, that's fine, but you can't use his seat because he's sitting there. Okay, now we're thinking about, who is it? Beth and Fran? Yeah, Fran and Beth, okay. So maybe Fran and Beth, and remember, we're gonna think about the number of ways that they are together. Because we could think about the total number of ways to seat five people all together. If we find the number of ways that Fran and Beth are together, we could take those away the only arrangements that would remain are ones where they're not together. So this is us thinking about how can we put these two people together? We want them together at this point. So we can put them here, we can put them here, put them there, put them there. And we call these four paired seats. Now remember what we talked about. Remember it can go Fran and Beth, 
or it can go Beth and Fran. So within those four paired seats, we have two factorial ways to arrange F and B. But now remember that we also have who? Not Adam, but we have Sydney, Dwayne, and Evan that also all need to be seated. So Sydney, Dwayne, and Evan could go there, or they could go here, or they could go here, or here, or here, or can barely see it. I'm sure that you can't. In any case, there are three factorial ways to arrange those guys. Now we're taking care of, because we're thinking about the four ways that we could put the paired seats in, we're leaving three other seats for them. So within our counting technique here, uh, we're accounting for the places that we could put these guys. So don't worry about them actually having a seat. They've got one. So our strategy here is to take all possible ways to seat five people minus the, the ways, possible ways, that F and B are adjacent to each other. Remember, they can be in two different arrangements in that way, F, B, or B, F. Um, and all that's going to be left is going to be ways F, B are not adjacent, which is what we want. This is what we want. So if we start with all possible, we take away what we don't want, we're going to end with what we want. So in a great way to uh, do the British subtraction there, say take away. We're going to remove from what we want, uh, remove what we don't want from all possible, and then we'll have what we need. I can arrange five people in five seats in five factorial ways. Minus, now depending on how you want to think about this, efficiency-wise, I would look at those two things as four factorial, four times three factorial. You multiply all three together if you're like, ah, I'm a little queasy on that. But I would say four factorial uh, times two factorial. And that's going to equal whatever I want. I'll leave that to you to calculate. Okay, number 19. Get a little room. Number 19 is similar to number three, except I say this problem is actually in balance. This problem is not too bad. Uh, challenging for sure, top shelf, but I would say in balance. So, Mr. Wells says that his password is seven digits and seven letters, but not necessarily in that order. No digits or letters are repeated. That's what makes it much easier. Uh, how many possible passwords are there? So the fact that I'm allowed to repeat, uh, not allowed to repeat anything the whole password makes this a whole heck of a lot easier than it was back on problem three, which we'll talk about in the future. But uh, basically, I want to take the same strategy, period three, period five, you saw this strategy in action. What I essentially want to do, because I'm not allowed to repeat, I'm picking seven digits and seven letters, I want to do the following. And uh, what order do they go in? Digits, then letters. So I want to begin by choosing the seven things that I want. Essentially, I'm going to build a set, the set of characters to use. I don't want them to be in order because, in fact, that's going to be my last task. going to arrange those seven characters. So let's look at it. The number of ways that I can create a set of seven digits and a set of 26 letters. So now let's say that, you know, I've created this set. There's no repetition. Um, the order doesn't matter. So all I'm doing is saying, okay, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So there are the 14 characters that are in my password. So now I want to think, well, how, ma how many ways can I arrange those things? There you go. You can arrange 14 things in 14 factorial ways. First part of the problem was us building, picking, what do we want to use? Then I just needed to arrange it. The comparison to problem three, this part, the part about picking the letters, was much more difficult because of the repetition that was allowed. We'll talk about that again more later. So, last problem, then I'm going home. Poker problem. In poker, a flush is a particular hand where all five cards are of the same suit. How many unique flushes exist? Now, the trouble that we find often in building poker hands combinatorically is that we think that picking each card is a task in itself, and it's not. Um, first, we, we want to think about, you know, what do we need to have true about the cards? So I think this is going to be actually a two-part task. First, I need to pick the suit. Then I need to pick the uh, cards. So I'm going to think about how many suits there are. Four. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Within each suit, there are 13 cards, and I would like to choose five of them. So this is good. If you ignore this, this would be the same answer to a question like, how many five-card hands contain all hearts? Well, there's 13 hearts. I want five. How many contain all spades? There's 13 spades. I want five. How about clubs? How about diamonds? Same, same. That's why we're multiplying by four. If you want... You could instead think of this as 13C5 plus 13C5 plus 13C5 uh, plus 13C5. Okay, that concludes the videos. I hope that um, you found them helpful. Uh, the, uh, if you, all you want was answers, um, I hope I didn't waste your time because those are posted on final site. Bye.